Welcome to our review on electroplating. First thing that we actually need to know then is what electroplating actually uses. Now, unlike electrolysis that uses inert electrodes, ones that are not changed, electroplating is going to use non-inert electrodes. So these are ones that will change during the process of electrolysis. Now, in our electroplating, we still need a cathode, an anode, and an electrolyte. So the cathode is going to be the object that we actually want to coat. The anode is the metal that we want to coat that object with. And our electrolyte is just the solution that surrounds them. But that solution must contain ions of the metal that it's being coated with. So a great example of where we use electroplating is in jewellery. Quite often what we see these days, as opposed to people liking the yellow gold rings, then more and more people are going down the route of having white gold rings. Now, that's just a ring that's been electroplated. So the cathode, when they're doing this, would be the actual ring or the piece of jewellery. The anode is the metal we're going to coat it with. So it may be silver, it could be rhodium. There's a whole range of different metals we could use there. And then our electrolyte has to have those ions of the metal it's being coated with. So in the example I've given you here, our anode is silver, therefore the electrolyte is going to be silver nitrate solution because there are silver ions present in the electrolyte. So what actually happens in this process of electroplating is that those metal ions from our electrolyte are going to be discharged on the surface of the object. So we end up with that coating of the metal. Now, what we find is that because we are losing those metal ions from the electrolyte, then we will have metal ions leaving the anode to replace them. So as a result of that, the anode actually gets smaller and smaller until eventually we use it up. If we have a look and see what that means in terms of our equations, then our silver atoms will lose electrons at the anode. So we start off with silver as a solid, which is the material that's making up our anode itself. And that's going to lose an electron to make it into a silver ion that's then lost into the solution. When we look and see what happens at the cathode, then the silver ions gain electrons. So we get our silver ion there, Ag+, and that's going to gain an electron to make it a silver atom. So just the Ag solid. So the ions are able to move through the electrolyte. And what we're doing there is we're transferring the silver from our anode to the cathode, which is the piece of jewellery we want to coat. Now, we will find that the electrons themselves that are being discharged will be moving through the wires between the two electrodes, because remember, it's all connected into an electric circuit. So another use of our electrolysis is to actually purify things like copper. Now, when we actually extract copper, it's not pure. There are other materials still present. And the big downside of that is one of the key uses of copper is in electrical wiring. If we've got a large number of impurities present, it's not able to conduct electricity so well. So what we actually want is pure copper. And the way we do that is by using electrolysis. So our anode in this case is the impure copper. The cathode is pure copper. And then we've got our electrolyte of copper sulfate solution. So it contains our copper ions. So when we pass current through this setup, we end up with our cathode gaining copper atoms. And as a result of that, it increases in mass because the copper is being deposited on it. The anode, which was made of our impure copper, is actually going to decrease in mass because the copper atoms are changed into copper ions they travel through our electrolyte towards the cathode. So we're losing copper there. The other thing that we will lose from our anode are any of those impurities that were present. Now they don't travel through the solution, they just sink down to the bottom and end up as this sludge underneath.